dearest, most bold friends that we have that has an incredible message that not only purifies, but it sets fire in you, is Kim Daniels. I want you to welcome this mighty, mighty woman preacher of God to come and break us through into the new. She and her husband, Ardell, two of the, my favorite people on earth. Thank God for them. Can I tell you something? I believe that there's a supernatural anointing in this place for people to be delivered from high blood pressure and sugar diabetes. No, 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 I'm telling you, I feel there's a healing virtue. I'm, I'm, I'm getting in the world, stand up right now. And I'm talking about migraine headaches, high blood pressure, sugar diabetes. This ought not to be in the church and I curse it to the root in the name of Jesus. I release the healing balm of Gilead. Not just in this place, but may the healing virtue be in your hands. That your healing ministry will come forth. And like never before, we're going to have to lay hands on the sick. And they will re re recover. And God is going to deliver us from high blood pressure medicine that's making us sick anyway. Some folks, you didn't really have the symptoms until the doctor spoke it over you and gave you the medicine for it. You better learn how to run. It scared me so bad yesterday when this man just touched me a couple of times and said, you have gout. The devil is a liar. I'm out. I ain't got gout. How many people have had, listen, doctors have authority. I don't know why I'm saying this. But I curse the diagnosis in the name of Jesus. There are good Holy Ghost filled doctors, but I sever you from the alliance of the system, from the pharmaceutical companies, from the insurance companies. In the name of Jesus, I break your power. And as an apostle of Jesus Christ, I prophesy and decree and declare that from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, you are healed by Jesus Christ. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. I can't move. I can't move you. I can't move till you get your healing. The healing virtue of Jesus Christ is in this place. Grab it and put it in your belly right now. Be healed. There have been word curses. This ain't got nothing to do with what I'm going to do right here. But there have been word curses of disease and sickness spoken over the people of God. But in the name of Jesus, God is sharpening our spiritual discerners and opening our eyes so that we can see our healing. I command the blinders to come out of your eyes. I command every mind-blinding and mind-binding spirit to come out of your eyes. The enemy wants to slow us down. But how many of you know that through this Passover celebration, we are not slowing down, we are picking up speed. The momentum of God. I say the momentum of the Holy Ghost. We are picking up speed. like never before 
for our healing, for our inner healing, for our deliverance. Are you hearing me? Receive the power of God. I say receive the power of the Holy Ghost. There's some folk in here, you in pain right now. I want you to come forward if you're in pain right now. Yandroske de Nebo Shanda. Have your way, Holy Ghost, in this place. If you're in pain right now, Hala Basaka. If you're in the house of the Lord, I curse pain. I curse pain. Ibo Shanda de Nebasaka. Ikondo Lobo Sinda de Nebo Shanda. Hey, my, if you in pain, see how many people in here in pain? I'm talking about pain. Come forward if you in pain right now. Ah, oh, we wait war against pain. I haven't had heels on in a long time. I went and got the the the, the long the, the highest pair of heels I got. Cause I'm walking out of pain tonight. Come on, somebody, you say that's foolishness. I say I'm walking out of pain tonight. I'm walking out of pain. The devil is making money off our pain. Shando robo shanda la la ba sata la la ba shata. Eh ma 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 ma. They are medicating what God wants to heal. Mandro karaba sondro shetere de bo shanda. Hey la 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 ba sata. Now I don't want you to get it mixed up. That I'm telling you to throw your medicine away. I'm not saying all of that. I'm saying realize that God wants you to be weaned off and delivered from anything from your source of healing other than the power of the Most High God. And in your power is the in your in your mind in your brain is the power to be healed. And I pray over your body right now, from from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And I command your your brain, I command your mind, Elobosata, Ekara, to be anointed, to flow the healing virtue of God through your spinal cord, to every nerve, to every organ, to every part of your body. Migraine headaches are cursed to the root. In the name of Jesus. Sugar diabetes, I call you by name, they call you a liar. There's no truth in you. All heart diseases, all lung diseases, asthma, go now. Every disease that will lead to a stroke, all kidney diseases, high blood pressure, you are a demon. And I call you out now. I command the spirit of worry and the spirit of cares to be separated from you right now. And I command that heaven is the word. Come up and off God's people right now. Cast your care on him. Come on, breathe in and breathe out. Haya ba shanda la ba sata. Oranda la ba sonda la ba shanda. And I command every spirit that will cause you to mismanage your body through a wrong diet to come out in Jesus' name. Every addiction. Mokorobo Shandrasa. Ikondroske de 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 asata. That's why arthritis come out of the hands right now. Arthritis. Carpetano. Let's go right now. And every disease of the joint. Mekorobo. And I specifically curse the spirit of gout. You are alive. Come out in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, you're standing right now. Wherever you are hurting, right now you need to move something and do something. Be healed in Jesus' name. 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 Spine, line up in Jesus' name. Brain, operate. How God call you to operate. Nerves, be open. Let the healing virtue of God flow through your body. Organs, receive the healing of God in the name of Jesus. 
Every woman in here, Makarana Bashanda, with female struggles in your body. If all you I wouldn't worry about nobody right now, lay your hands on your stomach and be healed in Jesus' name. Oh, I, I curse that demon. My God, I see it right now. Araba in America. Araba Shanda Rabasata. That want to take female organs out so women cannot reproduce. Maraba Sata Rabasande. You know what? And, and, and all of those wrong diagnoses of breast cancer, I curse to the root where women are having their breasts moved and removed when they did not have to in Jesus' name. And Father, as we touch and agree right now, I thank you that you're pulling the cover off the system. I thank you that you're pulling the cover off the system and you're, you're, rebe you're revealing the professional criminals by name, by company, by profession, now in Jesus' name. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. You can report your healing, amen, uh, to somewhere, but when you, when you heal, you want to tell somebody about it. Say it. Say, I'm healed if you've been healed. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. Como Sandra Sata. Ikorobo Shandaraba Sande. Hey, my, 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 my. Some of you, you're going to take the healing power of God home. You're going to lay hands on your loved ones that sick. And they're going to recover. I say, I say there's no distance in the spirit. You, you, listen, you waiting for the prophet. God waiting on you. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. If you are a believer, take the healing virgin to the hospital. Take it to your home. Take it wherever you are. Lay hands on your loved ones. And I touch and agree with you right now that they will recover. 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. Verse 14, it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what has he that believes with an infidel? Father, we thank you for your anointing in this place. And we thank you that it is the truth that makes us free. God, we want to be made free in this place tonight so that we can make others free. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for the truth. It's really a season. And we're stepping in a period where we need to Take a break from my televisions. I'm not telling you don't watch TV. I'm saying cut it off. I'm saying cut it off and get before the Lord. Hear what the Lord is saying. And don't let the day dictate your season. Don't let what's going on right now hinder you from what God is saying. Because we are living in the greatest time of the church that there ever has been. You know why I can prove that? Because we cannot prove when Jesus is coming back, but right now we are closer to that time than ever before. To the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I believe that we have ignored scriptures like uh, 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. Well, it tells us not to be unequally yoked and and, and what, what fellowship does righteousness have with unrighteousness? And what communion does light have with darkness? And what concord does Christ have with the liar? There's three words I want you to pay attention to. Fellowship, concord, and communion. The word fellowship in the Greek is met okay and it means intercourse. The word concord is uh, sunphonesis and it means 
to be in harmony with, to agree with, to stipulate by compact or coming together to concur with or to support. The word communion is koinonia. It means partnership, participation, benefaction, communication, distribution, intercourse. The title of my message tonight is Social Intercourse. Social intercourse. How can the church of Jesus Christ have fellowship with the things we have fellowship with? How can the church of Jesus Christ have concord and communion? And the Bible says that it is intercourse. How can this association, a fellowship, be called intercourse? Because clearly, uh, the Bible says in Amos 3 and 3, how can two walk together except they agree? So the Bible says you can't walk with both. Come on, somebody. You can't hang out with both. Except you agree. Well, I'm with them trying to win them. Well, whatever happened to the old-fashioned term, come out from amongst them. And be ye holy. You know, we don't, we don't hear many holiness messages from a black female with gold teeth on in her mouth and with jeans on. Because that's not what the Pharisees and the Sadducees of this day have defined as holy. But I'm telling you, there's a generation of people, and they're going to look like we least expect, and they will be holy. I say they will be holy. They will be holy because of the separation from the world and unto God. Some folks are trying to get with God, but they ain't never lose the world. That word agree, how can you walk with somebody except you agree with them? That word is yawad, and it means, that word agree means be married to them, be fought them, gather selves, and become one. It says, in other words, if you hang out with somebody long enough, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying, you literally become one with them. Woo, let me ask you this question. What is adultery? Is it limited to sex in the natural? When God addresses his people in the Bible, did he limit adultery to the physical? Did he limit it to physical fornication? And what does come out from amongst them really mean? Now let me say this to you. When I say come out from amongst them, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not telling you not to win them. Come out from amongst them doesn't mean you can't be around unbelievers. Or you can't work with unbelievers. Listen, I just, I was in the airport and I was drawing a lot of attention because my hand looked like creature feature. And I was sitting up there like this and, and a lady who was a professor in physiology came up and just started talking to me and I was, she said, something is really wrong with your hand. And she was scared. She was like, I think you need to go back to the back. And I was like, no, I'm going to Dallas to preach. And my husband said, what is the symbol on your neck? And she said to me, oh, this is Allah like your Jesus. I said, how do you know I'm not a Buddhist? She said, this is Allah like your Jesus. And I said, how do you know I serve Jesus? I never told you I serve Jesus. You a Muslim. I could be serving anybody. She said, yeah, you're right. I don't, I don't know how I know that. 
So she just started talking to me. She said, I think you're real funny. And she went and got her kids and said, listen to her. And so whatever language that they speak, I can't remember it. Arabic, she was, she was Hindu. But she said she was Muslim. But I, that's too confusing for me. She said she was a Muslim, and whatever language she spoke, she said she had to read the Quran in that language, Arabic or whatever. But she said to me, she said to me, I read it in Arabic, but I don't understand a word that it says. Isn't that crazy? I said, no, because people in the church do it every day. And she said, you are too funny. I said, I'm not going to talk about your people unless I talk about my people. And me and her, we were just like clicking. So I love homosexuals. Can I tell you the truth? Y'all know I preach against homosexuality. But I'd rather be stuck in an elevator with a bunch of homosexuals than a bunch of religious preachers. <laughs>